There you go. Awesome. My name is Jason King. I'm with Immortal Works, and I'm going to be moderating the panel on the Brandon Sanderson, Sanderson's Cosmere. So let's let the other panelists introduce themselves real quick. I'm Jenny Stevens. I'm um, an editor and author. Um, I and I've been a Brandon Sanderson. I'll give my Brandon Sanderson chops. I have been a fan for ten plus years, twelve years. Um, since right after Elantris, I was one of the OG Walden books in the Provo Mall people. Oh yeah. Um, so, uh, and I'm a huge Cosmere nerd, big time. My name is Daniel Friend. I am a freelance science fiction and fantasy editor. I took Brandon Sanderson's class at BYU to learn how to be a better editor for science fiction and fantasy people, and um, actually did learn something about writing myself during that time because I. And that's when I wrote the story that is now included in Trace the Stars. So if you get this nice. anthology, I'd be happy to send it for you. And uh, I also love Brandon's books. Um, I am a little different from most nerds in that I try and stay away from the 17th Shard and just enjoy things on my own. So we will have some different perspectives yes. on stuff, and this is going to be really fun. Awesome. And Wait, I've been... Jason, are you a 17th Sharder? I dabble. Devil. Me too. So I'm a little bit contaminated. I'm, I'm like a, yeah, I, uh, I posted years ago and I haven't posted since, but... This is good. This means we have variety of perspective on yes. the panel. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, I've actually been following Brandon Sanderson since his first website, which had like a pyramid on it or something. It was really weird. But, uh, um, okay, well, um, Let's get this started. This is a concept that is is huge. So I, I don't know. I think let's talk about shard worlds and which worlds we know, you know, have shards on them. Well, do we need to start with some definitions of what that even means? Come on, they're yeah. Brandon Sanderson fans. Okay, well, well, I, I've read two books. Okay, well, get out. Let's start <laughs> Come back when you're ready. <laughs> just in case this wasn't clear. No, I'm just kidding. Please don't go. Here there be spoilers. Yes. If yes. you don't like it, leave. Yes, thank you. <laughs> no, no, stay. It's okay. No, we'll start, we'll start from the beginning, just so, some basic things. That, that's great. Yeah. So, um, basically the mythology of the Cosmere starts with a being or force called Adenalsium. Um, and Adenalsium was at some point, I believe prior to all the published works mm -hmm. that are out at the moment, was shattered into 16 pieces called shards. And those pieces became uh, kind of... Uh, part of uh, beings that became known as shard holders, not shard bearers. Um, and they moved to different worlds and kind of became the gods of those worlds um, and were able to people it and their, their magic from the shard infused those worlds. Um, there are beings that can move between those worlds called world hoppers. Hoed is the most like popular and he's my favorite. Okay, I'm gonna have to take issue. It's Hoid. Yeah. Okay, all right, okay. That's true, I mispronounce it, and that's okay. I say Hoid because he originally appeared in Elantris, mm -hmm. and I pronounced all of those words as, t like, two syllables. <laughs> well, you kind of have so, to in Elantris. Yeah, so when they say, like, Hoed, which is very similar to Hoid, it just became part of my pronunciation, and I refuse to change. He's also so, known as Wit, so. Yes, Wit, um, what are the other ones? Co Oh, shit. Oh. No, that's not right. Yeah, somebody look page. it up. You can look that yes. up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you ever like need to look something up, there's a 17th Shard and the Copper Mind is their wiki if you want to know all of the minutia. Go ahead. So what you're saying is that basically he wrote a whole bunch of different series and then pulled a plant and decided no. to bring them all No, no, no. he no, planted that's, that's before he ever wrote he the first one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This, 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 is, this, is, this is why we are talking about the Cosmere at all, is because it is such an amazing feat of world building. Yeah. Like, what, what Brandon is doing in literature is basically the Marvel Cinematic Universe of Blueprint. That's true. And that is why it is so cool, and that's why we're having a panel about it, because no one else has done it on this level before, and has made all of these different magic systems, which are each works of art in their own way, It'd be able to interact with each other potentially as we go on through the series and have yeah. worlds and characters and people that interact throughout this whole series that you were you we haven't had before in fantasy multiple series that interact in the same way that are really part of one big grand cosmic series. Stephen King did it with uh, Dark Tower. 
That's a, that's a whole panel. <laughs> Right, he kind of evolved into it, and and I don't know. They're probably yeah, there. You go. Yeah, and there's. I'm sure that at some point um, it was an evolution of, of Sanderson's ideas. I don't know where it is, but I think for the most part he did uh, build out the Cosmere uh, kind of with a blueprint. Yeah. So that, that's what that's what Dragon Steel was. Yeah, it, which is currently unpublished. If you know where to look for it, have you, you can, read it? You've read it, haven't you? No. Okay. <laughs> but I know what it is, and I know yes. where I could find it if I really felt like it. You have to answer a series like a of intricate list. riddles to get to it. It's somewhere in the BYU library. Um, yeah, and I happen to know where they keep that type of stuff. Oh. I just haven't gone there yet. So, um, <laughs> because I'm afraid of what I might find out, and I want to, and I want to experience Dragon Steel the way Brandon wants it yeah. when he finally does release it, which is why I have not gone there yet because I know he will be changing things and put it out. He also discourages anyone from reading it. <laughs> <laughs> Only because it's like first author attempt. Yeah. He's embarrassed by it, but I'm sure it's. You guys could probably hear me without a microphone, so I'm just going to hand oh, these oh, okay. to you all too. Okay. So I'm loud and obnoxious. Some of are hard of hearing, and I prefer the microphone. Okay. Okay. Well, that That's works okay. Too. We can share. We're friends. I can also rap. You guys want. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Someone's got to lay down a sick beat for me, so. <laughs> you have the mic. You have to do that. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Sorry. I'm wasting valuable Cosmere time. Um, so I'm glad you, you brought up the definitions. I, I was going to just jump into this as a Cosmere nerd. So uh, now that we kind of have an idea of what uh, you know, what Adenalsium was and what the shards are. Um, so it's called Adenalsium. Adenalsium. I say Adenalsium. Uh, he he's not picky about his pronunciations. So if you pronounce something different than he does, he doesn't really care. Just make sure that you do include the L because in the original um, print of the Hero of Ages, the L was left out as a typo. Yeah. So every single time it appeared. So he just wrote. Ad no, it was only it was, it was only, only mentioned once. once. Yeah. So he wrote ad nauseum. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. It, it definitely it sounded more like a drug than yeah, like a, a supernatural being. Yeah. It's okay. They fixed it in the reprints. Yeah. Cool. All right. What's the question? Question is, what worlds do we know of that are shard worlds? Um, Cell, which is the world of Elantris. Scadrial, which is the world of Mistborn. Nalthus, which is the world of Warbreaker. Uh, Roshar, which is the world of. Um... Stormlight. Thank you. Um... Stormlight. Oh, shit. Taldane. Taldane, which is the world of White Sand. And First of the Sun. For, um, first, the, well, yeah. That, that's the oh yeah that's the one where they're not sure if it's a shard world or not it might have been previously there still is investiture yeah, on it magic. it's 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 an odd world and then there's um I, I believe that the one where uh, shadows for silence in the force of hell right. that it's a tre 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 threnody threnody yes. thank you that's yes. a shard and world. those each all have at least one shard on them um, but sometimes two or three or there used to be shards and now they're dead. <laughs> yeah, like Cell. Um, so, Cell, yeah. yes. Yeah, if, if, Have you written any worlds, any series, or any books that, that are confirmed not Cosmere? Yes, oh, yeah. yeah. Anything, anything with Earth. Anything that takes place on Earth or a form of Earth is not Cosmere. Um, yeah. So like the Rhythmatist, uh, Steelheart. And most of his sci-fi. Uh, Skyward, I think. Yeah, Skyward is like a future. Yeah, So. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and I have to confess, I actually don't really like his other stuff, except for Steelheart. So I like, I just like Cosmere. I have to admit, I'm not a fan of Alcatraz. Yeah, I haven't tackled I, I know, it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just, I, I don't love his discovery writing. Um, when he plans it, it's like, knocks out of the park. Disco his discovery writing is not for me, but it's not Cosmere, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I mean, I guess we got different uh, levels of discovery here for people. Who here has read all three volumes of Stormlight? I'm on the second floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, we forgive you. <laughs> all right. So, with the Stormlight Archive, um, there's a lot of crossover. I mean, there's crossover with uh, Mistborn, but there's obvious crossover with uh, the Stormlight Archive. Is this going to be the definitive series in the Cosmere that brings it all together? No. Explain. Um, I believe the plan is that um, the 
one of the series that will bring it all together. So Mistborn was planned as a trilogy of trilogies. Um, it's pronounced trilogy. <laughs> there you go. Um, it's so, but he got a little sidetracked with the wax and wane. So I believe there's another word for them now. It's gonna be a quadrology. No, or? no, no, no. Um, <laughs> eras, um, where there's different eras. So now we're on era two. Then there'll be an era three, era four. Um, and in era the last four is one, be sci-fi. Uh, I know. In the last one with sci-fi, apparently there's supposed to be a lot of uh, of. Crossover. crossover. Thank you. Crossover. That's the word I was looking for. Um, and then also when he gets around to writing Dragonsteel mm-hmm. um, and Hoet's story. Which... Boy! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm so excited for Hoet's story. <laughs> it physically hurts me every time you say that. <laughs> Wit. Let's just agree on that. No. Okay. <laughs> so, do you have anything else you want to No, she got it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I will. No, I, I won't stop. I'll keep, be no, no, keep being awesome. Oh no, yeah, I keep being awesome. I'm still learning and trying to do that. So, um, he'll get there. Yeah, that's not what James says. He's <laughs> right there. Um, so, with the crossovers, um, what are some of the crossovers we've seen, and maybe what are some of the not so obvious crossovers in Stormlight so far? Um, well, the most obvious ones are in Oathbringer in the newest book, where you've got people that it's, you can't read the book and not get that they're from another place. Whereas with all the, with Mistborn crossovers, you're like, okay, this is a guy's a little weird. Maybe he's just from a different part of something. And if you're not really aware of the Cosmere, you could be forgiven for not recognizing them for who they are. But in, um, but in Oathbringer, they go into Shadismar and they meet a whole bunch of people like, wow, you are not from this planet and very obviously so. And that's the most obvious one that we've got. And then the other one is, of course, Hoyt himself. If you, once you read two or three, you're like, this name keeps popping up. Is it really just some random dude with the same name in all of these books? Is this just like some one of his little hat tips that he always does to somebody? And after a while, you realize, no, he really is the same guy all the time. And then once you pick up on that, you get really excited every time he shows up. You're like, Yes, and when you realize that Wit is actually Hoyt, you're like, oh, things just got real. <laughs> and so, what, yeah, because what, because especially the more you know of the Cosmere, the more exciting it gets, because if you can kind of guess, ooh, this person's really into colors, I wonder if they could use breath and how that would work on Roshar. You start, I mean, that's the, we all read fantasy because we love that sense of wonder and because we love thinking about things in a new, fun way. And this does it in multiple levels, which is why it's so very cool. So anything you want to add to that? No. <laughs> One really cool, cool thing is I'm noticing, no, never mind, that's too spoilery. Um, okay, so. We did announce spoilers. Yeah, but I feel like, I feel like I gotta be a little respectful. All right. Um, okay, so. Has has Brandon named all the shards? No. no. What are the shards that we know? <sighs> Rune, preservation, odium, cultivation, honor. That's those are the Mistborn and the um, Roshar shards. Um, I believe. Endowment. Um, yes. Endowment is Nalthus. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Autonomy. That's yes. Autonomy has been named. Um, what were the ones on cell? Dominion and devotion. Yes, yes. dominion and devotion. So that's we're up. And to um, nine. raise. What is his shard? Odium. Odium. You I did say odium already. He had so, a partner. Was one of one of the shards. What was her name? Do you remember? Cultivation. We already no. named her as well. So we're up to nine. That means yeah. there's. We seven get to the left. B though. Yeah. Now if we're now well, just real quick, if we're looking for have... lists. This is what the internet's for. Yes, I had them in my. It's notebook. really hard to keep track of all of this in your head, and that's okay. This is really, really complicated. Brandon has a huge um, Cosmere Bible, if you want to call it that, where he keeps track of all this stuff because he can't keep it all in his genius brain on his own. He has assistance for this. It's okay to think this is really big and to just take it one bite at a time. So don't worry about it if you can't name off all the shards. 
it's not even all that important to your enjoyment of the book. Just worry about the shards that are on the planet you're reading about and what they're doing because that is enough craziness that you're gonna be satisfied with just that. Um, there's also like the mythology changes as the books go on. So whatever is written down becomes part of the new mythology. So for example, ruin and preservation are really no longer shards anymore because they were merged into harmony. Um, and so things are, now there's like 15 shards instead of 16. Um, and there are other shards that have been completely destroyed or, or shattered or broken. Um, and so it, it does kind of change as the thing goes on. And so, go ahead. One of the interesting things about breaking shards is that um, Brandon really loves science even though he writes so much fantasy. And that's why his fantasy is so cool, it's so scientifically based. And he has basically created the um, uh, conservation of magical energy for his universe so that even if a shard is destroyed, the actual power behind that shard can never be created or destroyed. It always exists in some form. The question is, can it ever be pulled back into one person again like it is with a shard? And that's still, as far as I understand, an open question. We don't know where that's going to go yet. And yes. the both brainer though, kind of hints. It does hint. Yeah. Uh, and I, but I think that that gives you an insight as to, into some of the Cosmere characters' motivations. So I believe the main goal of Hoed, Hoed is, to, <laughs> is to try to restore Adonalsian. Um, I, I, that's a theory, um, but uh, that he's trying to go and learn all these magics and get everything kind of invested in himself so that he might bring back Adonalsian. Go ahead. Sir. Do you think there's an end game in mind? I mean, because you can have a setup without necessarily having an end game. You can just have them. You it, know, I don't. Off. I don't think it's Brandon's style to not know exactly how things are going to end. Okay. <laughs> Brandon is the ultimate outliner, and he definitely knows where he wants to take all this. Like he is very the, good at how not many books saying it's going to take. Yeah, he knows exactly what he wants to do with Stormlight. He's got the first set of five, and then he's going to have a 300 or something year break, and then he's going to have another <laughs> set of five novels. Oh my that God, are all somebody that invent huge. immortality, please, in the meantime. Yeah, we do not want Brandon to have to do what Robert Jordan did, and I'm not sure that it could be done. So we just all need to take really good care of Brandon to make sure this ends well. Put his brain in a jar, like, <laughs> like a perfect state. So. Hey, he's already imagined this, so why not? Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, let's see. I guess so since what are some of the good like online resources? Like you mentioned, that there's a lot of online stuff out there. Uh, I mean, obviously the biggest ones are Seventeenth Shard and the Coppermind Wiki because those are um, kind of fan uh, uh, input things, and that's the main ones where people go. There's um, Brandon's website. I, I, I can't think of many more. We're going to sneak into his house and steal that Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Who's with me? Somebody hack into his... Go ahead. But if you the, the Bible isn't actually a physical thing. Anymore. No, no, it's, it's a, a wiki. Personal wiki. He, I know. He can search through it anytime he needs to. Or, you know, Peter can search or through it anytime. Yeah. Let's be real. He has assistance to do searching wikis for him. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um... One question I want to throw out to, to you guys is the timeline. Um, probably the, I mean, the biggest, the biggest we know, the most we've di di <laughs> dived into the story has been with um, Scadriel and Roshar. What, how do those worlds timeline match up? Do we know? I, my understanding is that we don't know yet unless Brandon has just said something at a reading that I'm not aware of. Occasionally he drops little hints if you go to his book readings. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we only know right now um, the timelines within each world. We're not yet sure how they interact. He has given, he has I, I'm sure he has given some hints. Um, and a, lot of, a yeah. lot of that stuff, the quotes that he, get, uh, the quotes that he gives and people's theories are all compiled. Um, and you can find links to, to um, the most likely timeline. So what we know right now is that we have um, the original Mistborn era is the end of a thousand years of stagnation under the Lord Ruler. We then have 349 years between um, the end of Hero of Ages and the beginning of the Wax and Wayne books. We will have a similar gap 
most likely between that and the next era of Mistborn, and then another gap between that and Era 4. Era 4 is where we really expect Scadrial, this is my own personal theory again, this is when I really expect Scadrial to start interacting with the rest of the Cosmere because they will have the technology to actually go out and meet them. And we have also seen in the Ars Arcanums, which are written by Chris from Talvain, that Scadrial is really good at technological advancement, much more so than the rest of the Cosmere. And if, the, if it wasn't for the Lord Ruler holding things back for a thousand years, they would probably be able to, at some point, just conquer the Cosmere just from technology. Scadrial is a really interesting place. We also know that Roshar has been around for thousands and thousands and thousands of years with the shards as, they have, as it's gone through its cycle that we discover what the Knights Radiance were doing back in the day. And that even before that, and we're not sure where this fits in with Autonauseum, but even before that, the, the, it's what's teased at the very end of Oathbringer, spoilers people, is that there was another inhabited planet in the Roshar system that is now almost completely uninhabitable because of magical cataclysm. I yes. want a series on that. I want to see what happened. He might even do it. Odium, Odium's trapped on Braze right That's now. That's why they refer to Braze as hell yep. in the books. That's where they Because it's part of the Cosmere mythology. It's fine. I'm not a nerd. It's fine. <laughs> Sorry, go no, ahead. that's awesome. That's great. Um, following up on that, though, there there are hints in the Wax and Wing books that Odium is already making incursions into Scadrio. What are your guys' takes on that? Go ahead. Are we sure it's Odium? Well, going by the name of Trell. I mean, yeah. All, all we know right now is Trell, and we know that there is something that is um, encroaching on Scadrio that has got Harmony worried because he can't see it well, and. Like, and when Wax tells him, well, that, you're God, that's freaking me out. He's like, it should. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so is this Odium in some new form or guise or a new plot that he's got? Is this something else that's even more powerful? We don't yet know, but ooh, I want to find out. There's also a mention of Trell in White Sand. Oh. Um, there is a character just kind of right at the end, like some sort of mason whose name is Trell that I think there's something there. Hmm. That, that I did not know. <laughs> yeah, and, and White Sand is right at the beginning of the timeline, um, the, the established timeline of things that have been published. Um, and I believe the end is uh, Sixth of Dust. Dust. Six of the Dust. Thank you. <laughs> um, and so it kind of, and at the end of that story, there's like space travel. So. Um, he's already published quite a large portion of the timeline, um, but there's still so much more. Also, relativity. Don't be surprised if he takes this into account somehow, some way, because this is Brandon, and he loves to bring in real science whenever he can. That may, it also, it makes me wonder about... <laughs> no, I... It's fun. It's appreciated. Thank you. It makes me wonder about how time works inside like Shazmar and even maybe even the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. um, because Hoit is in all of these different places and doesn't really seem to age. Well, there's um, Brandon, of course, is, is an active member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And there's a really interesting um, idea that's hinted at in uh, Mormon scriptures that after the second coming of Jesus Christ, that time will be no longer. And, and as a theological thing, we don't really know what that means. But it's an interesting enough phrase that I would not be surprised if Brandon was to put that into practice in the spiritual realm, where the spiritual realm really doesn't have time. And that's why Hoyt can exist there. Again, theory, I could be totally wrong, and that's okay. That's why I love these books, because you can you can extrapolate and you can guess and you can have all of these theories and then almost always what happens is Brandon tells you this is what's really going on and it's ten times better than what I imagined and that's why I love these books. <laughs> um, I've come across several people in Shades Mark? Years. <laughs> no, not quite, but um, no, who don't like the idea of combining sci-fi and fantasy despite Star Wars. It's but um, I was wondering, and, and I mean, even in Star Wars, George Lucas kind of screwed that up. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I love it, but you know. It's another panel. <laughs> <laughs> it's another panel. So people think often that they should be separated, and from what I'm hearing from you, Brandon doesn't. What is your take on that? Let's be honest, they're really two sides of the same coin. I love it. 
I, I, it's similar to how I write. I can come up with a magic system and then I, but why though? Why is it like that? How, how does that change how the species that uses it evolved? How do, and so there's always, there's always some sort of, I feel, basis, a scientific basis for magic. Um, I, even if it's something really amorphous or something we can't understand, like, what is that, what is that quote? Somebody? Technology is? It's technology is a magic that we simply don't understand yet. Or any something technology like sufficiently yes. advanced is yes. indistinguishable well, from, from magic. magic. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I think the, the quote opposite. Quote, I think the actual quote you clearly looking for is, uh, 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 any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's Clark's law. Right? Thank yeah. you. I also think the opposite, or the uh, inverse is true, that any good magic system should also have a basis and be a little bit indistinguishable from science. And that's the amazing thing that Brandon has done, is that he has, I mean, most of the time I define fantasy as, and science fiction as we are both trying to achieve a sense of wonder and a sense of awe in our writing, and that in fantasy we do it through magic, and in science fiction we do it through technology and science. And Brandon has come that has come around and taken those and said, "I am going to turn my magic systems into science," and then he did it. And that is possibly the most mind blowing thing that he does every book. To the point where some fans were able to predict things that he hadn't revealed yet, especially about like the Skadrial magic system, because he set up such a not a rigid but a very um, yeah, it's it's like a hard magic. Um, it's very formalized. There are rules. There are so many rules to it that people were able to figure out um, these like hidden metals that he hadn't revealed yet and what they would do, and be able to then theorize from there. So don't it, tell me what they are. Because okay. I'm well, I probably wouldn't be able to anyway. Um, you can go to the seventeenth chart, and they have charts and things. Um, I got but, one tattooed on my back. <laughs> all right. Now, no, now you need to prove it, man. No, court order. I can't just roll in public. <laughs> Now, on that note, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I want to, to kind of jump um, to talking about Hoyt a little bit more. Okay. Um, and uh, so in, in the Stormlight Archive books, um, there are headings, and some of them appear to be correspondence between, um, I'm just trying to, I know his name, it's on the tip of my tongue too, but it's Hoyt, and it's another yeah. name for him. Um, Please. Somebody I can't the remember. Love God, I know. It, <laughs> it starts with a C. It's like Calafia or something. I can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, um, what do we think Hoyt is doing? And we kind of talked about that a little bit, but where did he come from? Because he mentions he knows the shard holders. He's from Yolen. Right. That's okay. his planet of origin. Um, and yeah, he was he was somehow involved in the shattering. Um, it's been hinted that he could have been a shard holder and chose not to. Um, so, because I feel like he's the ultimate hero of the Cosmere, and his goals are probably the best goals, um, that when he doesn't want to be a shard, there's probably something more going on that's under, there's, a, there's another story, there's another part of this that we don't really understand. There's always another secret. Well, I, 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 <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of issue. I'm not sure if Hoyt really is the ultimate hero, because so far he's been a little more Loki-like to me. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're one of those. <laughs> so, no, but, no. anyway, um, Hoyt is interesting because uh, obviously we've already talked about he's apparently immortal because he's in all of these places all these different times. There's also something really interesting if you read Mistborn's Secret History, where because... Wait, spoilers? Yeah, spoilers! <laughs> because Kelsier <laughs> is at that point um, no longer mortal, he's just his, you know, his spirit. 
Hoyd's able to beat him up, and he makes a comment to the effect that, I haven't been able to use violence in so long. <laughs> He's so excited to beat someone up, and then he does very effectively. So it, that, that to me raises more questions about Hoyd and who he is and what oh, he's yes. doing than anything else that he has ever done. And it makes him seem not quite so much like the hero, but more like maybe a villain, maybe a psychic, maybe he's, he's some kind of radical element. And, I, and because of that, that moment, I don't trust him anymore. He's, I think he's just a morally gray character and we're not quite sure what his motivations are, um, and we're not quite sure if he's going about the right way to get them finished, but that's why I love him, because he is kind of this unpredictable, like, you know, um, stick in the spokes that they weren't necessarily expecting. I think it kind of shows a little bit of his intentions. He has a conversation with Dalinar at some point, where he tells him he'll try to help him as much as he can, but don't he won't hesitate to let the world be destroyed if it serves his ultimate goals. Um, I do think he's yeah. a hero. Um, I just think that he has the big picture, and he's willing yeah. to also do the ends justify the means kind of thinking. I think of him a little bit like the Doctor in Doctor Who, um, that, you know, I mean, the Doctor sacrificed his own people. Spoilers, sorry. Um, or I guess I should say her people. Um, in order to, for, for what she deemed the greater good. Um, and I, I think that Hoed is a bit similar, but he has this kind of big picture thing that you're talking about. I mean, he has a lot more knowledge than the other people, and while he'll do his best to save them and to, and to, um, to, to, I mean, he wouldn't be talking to them, he wouldn't be telling them stories, he wouldn't be trying to make better if his ultimate goal was to destroy them. Um, so I do feel like ultimately he has he, what he wants is the greatest good for the greatest amount of people. Just look what he does with that little girl at the end of Oathbringer. I don't, I can't, I can't think that's a villain, you know. Well, the, his ends justify the means thing is what makes me is a big red flag for me. And this is where, and this is the great part about this Cosmere is that we can have arguments about this. And we will until the very end, <laughs> and when we finally find out what's actually going on. Because a, a person can be a villain and still build someone up. A person can save another person if it goes to their nefarious ends, and that doesn't necessarily mean killing everybody. Now, the other interesting thing about Hoyt is that he is under a, um, to him, very specific set of constraints, and that there are things that he cannot do, like kill a person who is alive. And that is really interesting that whatever he is planning to do, he is not, there are certain actions that he cannot take. That's why he's playing this long game. That's why he's interfering in the ways that he can. That's why he can't help Dalinar as much as he might want to, because we don't know what all those constraints are. It sounds like the constraints of a shark holder. Do you yeah. think that they're self-imposed or that they're imposed on him? I think that they would be, I think that they are imposed on him because he has desires to do otherwise and is not able to. Now, I could be wrong about this. We are very firmly in the realm of speculation here. <laughs> but we do know that Hoyd has constraints that limit his actions and that because he is trying to work around those constraints and that what he does is all is what he can do. It's the most that he is able to do to further his goal. So he's got a really interesting set of powers, but also some really interesting limitations. And that's Sanderson's second law of good magic systems, is limitations are more interesting than powers. Hoyd has that in abundance, and that's fascinating. Amen. I, mean, <laughs> I, think, uh, I think it's also interesting that we've learned he's collecting different forms of investiture across yeah, the cosmere. Yeah, he is. So. He's going to use hemallergy and give everybody every single thing. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> no, seriously. When you, if you look at the end of the Ars Arcanum in Mistborn, he says that hemallergy has the greatest potential for the Cosmere. What no, could you, it was, no, not Hoyt. Hoyt doesn't say that, but, but yes. he knows what's being said there. Yeah. And so if you can use hemallergy on somebody from all of these different planets and get all of those different magic systems and then stick them into one other person, how much crazier, pow more powerful than the Lord Ruler does that person end up being? Okay, well now I'm picturing like a Frankenstein, like, <laughs> at an Alcyum, like lovebird around just, the cosmere. Just cosmic. earrings, you also look like Sazed, just lots of earrings that are hemallergic. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want, to br uh, <laughs> I want to bring up another obscure point real quick. Um, there's a story, I think it's in, oh my gosh, it's either in Way of Kings or, or Words of Radiance, <gasps> with the Shoemaker. 
Oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I think he's the Shoemaker, but... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Nail hunts him down and kills him, but before that, he tells the story. He's, he's making shoes for orphans or something awesome. Um, but he's telling a story about uh, basically how, how a God became everything so he could understand everything. The one. The one, yeah. I just want to get your take on what that is, and do you think that's just uh, something that Brandon's kind of... Does that have to do with the greater story? I don't know, because he has so many invented religions in all of his worlds, and there are so many possibilities for how those could be connected to the larger shard story, um, and how many of them are just like little branches that a civilization has taken from just a part of the story versus how many are so close to the actual truth. Um, so I, I don't know. I thought you were going to talk about the wander sale. And no, please, please do that. If you want to do that next. No, answer. no, you're fine. Well, one other thing to keep in mind is that um, Brandon knows very well that stories and mythology change and evolve over time. I do not expect him to give us the actual truth in a um, interlude story like that. I do expect him to drop hints. I do expect him to give like one little nugget and if he can parse it out among all of the other stuff that's just invented for that character in that world, then you'll get something. But that's part of the fun is going on these little scavenger hunts throughout the books and seeing what goes on. Yeah. Do you want to do that other story yeah. just for fun? Oh no, it's okay. I just, I know that they're doing, um, I believe he's doing maybe an extra novella or there's a something that's going on with the Wonder Sale and I'm really excited. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So um, we have a few minutes left, but I'd like to kind of open it up. Uh, you guys listen to us geek out. And actually, that's what this panel should have been called, is uh, Cosmere Geek Out. Yeah, um, yeah, that's why I'm glad Brandon is not here today, because I'm... Yeah. If Brandon was here, we would turn the time over to him yes. for a presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, uh, so let's open it up to questions uh, or theories, comments, whatever you guys want to talk about. Um, we'll do you real quick. Was Brandon supposed to be no. He, no, 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 no. He's coming tomorrow. Oh, okay. This is a hero worship panel. So. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, quick wish lists for any media adaptations. Ooh. Ooh. You guys want? <laughs> I, I, I would really, obviously, I, I think Elantris is probably my favorite, but I would really love to see um, a movie or a TV show about Warbreaker. Um, it's one of the lesser known stories, um, but it, I just think it would be like visually so amazing to see the vibrant colors and to and to be able to play with those colors on the screen. Um, some visual way of showing if somebody is drab or if somebody is or something is awakened or something like that. I just think it would translate really well. Maybe I'm old school, but just missed one all the way. No. <laughs> oh, as that as would be so possible. cool. I mean, just, I, I, I do understand, if I read the State of the Sanderson correctly, that they are um, in the process of trying to make Stormlight into a miniseries like Game of Thrones. We will see where that goes because not all this kind of Hollywood. stuff, you know, just, it takes a lot more time than you want and it's all really complicated even though it's an awesome story. Now, this isn't Cosmere, but didn't Fox buy the rights to Steelheart? I thought I read that. Yeah. No, no, somebody brought, bought the rights to the Cosmere. Well, no, 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 I know. Okay. I know that. I'm talking about... So, um, oh, Steelheart. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, so the production company that made uh, Stranger Things owns the rights to Steelheart and... Steelheart I'm and totally here for that. And uh, it's the two brothers. I can't remember the name. So oh, yeah, yeah. Um, they do... Um, Cohen they Brothers? They uh, Real Steel. The, yeah. uh, Jackman and yeah, the Robot. Yeah. Somebody Rock and Sock and Robots, the movie. Yeah, yeah like <laughs> So that that and um, uh, the detective story, I can't remember the name. Legion. 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 No, the other no, no. no snapshot, perfect snapshot. 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 Thank you. Okay, yeah. yeah. Those are the two closest right now. Um, but the MG does hold all the rights to the cost here, and they are shopping around to find find somebody. Snapshot was so good. Jason, we have a question. Yes. Uh, Sorry. Can we just talk about night? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, would you like to do some today? You mean today? sword, Nini? Yes, I would. <laughs> what would you say? Nightblood. So the most fascinating thing to me about Nightblood is how it is introduced to Seth as a shard blade. I'm not sure if that's just to get it into Seth's it head about what that is, 
but it's really interesting because we know that Nightblood was not made on Roshar. We know who the forger of Nightblood is. We've met him. And um, you know, and what Basher is doing at this point, I don't even know. I didn't yeah. 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 So Nightblood has a sword now too. Yeah. So so, this, so yeah, Nightblood is like the most creepy, evil thing. But like just so much fun, you just always want to have more Nightblood, and it's really good that we don't because you would get tired of it eventually. But Brandon knows exactly how much to put in, and that is amazing. I love how Zeth and him are having like this buddy comedy, you know? <laughs> oh god, that would be the perfect like cop and sidekick. Like, let's go to stories of evil. Also, I, I always thought of Nightblood as a female. I don't know why, because it's very clearly male. I mean, it says, I mean, like, it Does says. Does it say it. he? Yeah. It says he. Okay. Okay. But I just always thought of Nightblood as, as a female voice, and that's just my own weird brain interpreting stuff. Yeah. It, he always reminds me of that paperclip from Microsoft because of what he says. Clippy? <laughs> yeah. He says, Would you like to kill some evil today? And it's, it's similar to what, you know, Clippy yeah. says. Do you want to learn how to save your dog? That's the inspiration. We know that. All right. Just Let's like stretch them out, black smoke. We're good. Yeah. We've got uh, probably one or two more questions. Go ahead. So as a comment on Nightblood, um, I believe one of the words, one of the questions Brandon got asked about Nightblood is he said that Basher actually modeled Nightblood's creation after Shard Blades. So he had he already been to Roshar? He had already been to Roshar and learned about him and then made Nightblood to kind of imitate him. Well, and now I need to reread Warbreaker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> From the beginning. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm just going back to the, the Mistborn idea because I was I was thinking about you know movie adaptation because I think it would make a phenomenal um, mini series like a Netflix or something. Uh, but how would you like show the different burning nights? Gosh, I think there's lots of ways. <laughs> turn over the professional so storyboarder. <laughs> Did you bring your binder? Uh, yeah. Hello, no. Um, so there are some things in film that books can do that film can't. Sometimes you have to give some sort of like a visual indicator to the audience. That's what I was thinking. Um, but something really fascinating that Lord of the Rings did is give the Ring of Power itself a voice when you're looking at it. And I think maybe either the two options I'm thinking of is some kind of specific sound cue or voice when they're burning a specific note. I like or that. Like some, something really yeah. subtle. Yeah. Something or smoky for like copper. Slight visual aura. And it's or like around the screen. Mm -hmm. and it's you see the blue lines. If the character who yes. is burning copper, they will be able to perceive whatever effect, be it visual or audible, more clearly. Yeah. Than burning. yeah. I like that. Copper? Yeah. That's a great so idea. that's like the, can we hire you for this? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that you have a 10-year plan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys.